trapezium rule. Most often what it's talking about is the conditions for which you have overestimates or underestimates and also what graph transformations would change one thing, an overestimate, maybe to an underestimate. Um, so let's talk about the conditions first. Uh, trapezium rule overestimates for convex graphs. So pictures that look a bit like this, right? And someone in the comments has told me that the best way to remember this after I got it wrong a few times is that um, this looks a bit like an exponential graph. Um, and so x convex, this is the convex. Now, these words absolutely don't matter. You're not tested on them, which is why the fact that I got it wrong basically every time in the whole paper walkthroughs didn't really make a difference. The key conditions are you have the sketch in your head and that you know that means that f double dash is greater than zero for an overestimate. Now, it doesn't matter about f dashed at all, right? Because f dash is the gradient and you can have either a negative or a positive gradient being overestimated. All that matters is f double dashed being greater than zero and that's called convex. And then concave gives you underestimates, uh, exactly the opposite condition on the der second derivative. And again, the first derivative doesn't matter. You can either have negative or positive gradient um, and you can still have underestimates. Now again, um, those are the conditions we need to know, but um, what we'll talk about a lot is the conditions in which that would change from one to the other. Um, and I'll explain what I mean by that in a bit. The first question that we'll do though is, is just from last year, is actually just a do a trapezium rule question. It's not talking about um, estimates at all. It's just or, or overestimates or underestimates, just do this question. So okay, let's, let's sketch this because I've talked, how, I don't know how many times about how useful sketching is. Log graphs look like this. Um, they have an x-intercept of um, of 1 because log to base 10 of 1 is 0. And I need three strips here. We're going up to 2 and starting at a half. So my three strips, it would be logical, are a half to 1, 1 to 1 1.5, 1 1.5 to 2. Those give me three strips. Um, and my corresponding f of x values, which are really helpful because they give me the height of each place, are, well, just for input 2 here to get this, input 1 and a half to get this, and then input a half. Now, 2 log to base 10 of a half can be written as this, 2 to the power minus 1. Put the minus 1 into the front, and that just verifies that I have a negative output down here, which I already knew, but anyway. Okay, so let's work out each of these areas individually. Let's do this one first. So distance across is a half. So we're going to do a half times the sum of the two outputs, this times this, times a half, because it's a plus b over 2. Uh, so we're going to get two halves here, this one representing the distance across, this one representing the a plus b over 2 bit. And then we add these together. Now log laws say that we can just do this times this here uh, to get this. 3 over 2 times 2 is, a, is just 3. Uh, this half cancels with this 2, you're just left with 1 left over. And then we can move on to this one. Now this is just a triangle. Uh, distance across a half, height of this. So it's just going to be a half times a half times this. Uh, this half cancels with this. Um, so we're just left with this here. Log laws again mean we can just do this times this with the half out here. And we get this. Those are the two bits here. And now here, it's, it's just another triangle, right? Distance across of a half, um, height of 2 log 2 times a half because it's a triangle. And uh, this cancels with this. We just get a half log to base out of 2. Um, but of course, an integral would consider this area as negative. So when we're doing trapezium rule, it's going to be this plus this take away this area that I just found there. Um, now, log laws say to do this divided by 2 because we're taking away the logs. 9 over 2 divided by 2 is 9 over 4. And then uh, you can do log laws to move this power to the top here and say it's log to base 10 of 9 over 4 to the power half. It roots both these things individually and you get this answer here. So the only thing that we really need to be careful of there is just remembering how integrals work is that um, anything down here is going to give you a negative out, uh, output in your integral and these are going to give you positives. So if you're doing trapezium rule, just do it separately and take away anything that's below the axis um, at the end. Good, so now we're going to get into some actual overestimates, underestimates. So the sensible thing to do here would be to sketch this curve, of course. Um, so this is just a upside down quadratic moved up 10 places roughly, so like this. I, I worked out its roots were at root 5 and that's going to be vaguely helpful to me. Um, now I'm going to est uh, in, uh, estimate between 0 and 1. Um, now 1 could be roughly here because root 5 is a bit bigger than 2. And now this is clearly a con uh, concave graph here. Um, so it's going to be an underestimate. The, the straight lines, no matter how many you did for trapezium, I mean, if you just did one trapezium, then clearly it will be underneath this curve here. So it's going to be an underestimate. Um, so, so clearly we're, we're going to discount all of these for case number one, which is just the original graph. So discount all of these down here. Um, it's also nice to verify that I said this at the start, f double dash is less than zero. If we differentiate this twice, we're just going to get minus four. So, so clearly an underestimate, which is good. Um, now this one here, we're just going to shift the graph one place to the left. Um, now, you could either shift this graph to the left and integrate between 0 and 1, or you could just integrate between 1 and 2. 
right? That 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 same patch there would just be moved over to here. Um, and so so this is we could we could do either we could either move it across to get this and integrate between one two, or we could just in, in, integrate between zero and one, sorry, or just integrate between one two. Either way, we can still see that it's clearly still an underestimate because we haven't actually done anything to the graph. So we're definitely under and then under. And now this one here, we're still doing that movement, so we may as well just consider integrating it in this little width band here. And then we're reflecting the line y equals six. Now where is that? Well, here when x is one, this graph is clearly eight, and when x is two, this graph is two. So y equals six is in the middle somewhere. And so we'll reflect the graph here, keeping this point the same, and we'll get something that looks like this. But we can clearly see that this graph is now convex. Um, and so this is going to be an, un, uh, an, an overestimate. It's going to be the opposite case. And actually, this is a running theme in Tamira, is the way to get an underestimate to swap to be an overestimate, one very good way is to reflect it um, horizontally in some sort of horizontal line. Um, that's going to swap from concave to convex or vice versa. And so that will swap the, the estimate as well. Um, and that's going to be a common theme. So that's the answer to that one. But we'll see it again here. So there's another chance to see it. Um, so we have some function between 0 and 1, um, where the function is also between 0 and 1, and it's an underestimate. So actually, we can do the same thing here. I've, I've just drawn the same graph. I've just squashed it down a bit to fulfill these conditions. And um, yeah, between 0 and 1, it's, it's clearly now an underestimate because the trapeziums would go underneath this curve. And now it's asking us what will happen to any of these. Which ones will change? Which ones will change from under to over? Now, if we just move the graph up one place, which is what this transformation is, clearly it's still an underestimate because the convex, sorry, the concavity of the graph or concavity, I don't know what, what it is, um, would not change if you just move it up. So that's not going to make a difference. Um, now, if we stretch it out by factor two, again, concavity won't change like that. So that's, that's not going to, that's not going to matter. If we move it one to the left, which is what this is doing, but then also move our limits one to the left from zero to one to minus one to zero, we're just going to be integrating the same patch, right? So we move the graph one to the left, but then integrate between here. We're integrating exactly the same patch, so it's not going to make a difference. If we reflect the graph in the uh, y-axis, this is, reflect the graph in the y-axis, but then again, just integrate across the negative bounds that we were before, you know, you know, take this graph here, reflect it, pretend it wasn't already symmetrical, reflect it here and then integrate on the on this side, you're just going to be integrating this, right? So that's not going to make a difference. So by elimination, we're down to here. But notice, same thing as the question before, um, we're reflecting this graph in the um, in a horizontal line, right? We're reflecting this graph in the x-axis. Um, and when we reflect in the x-axis, it becomes this and it becomes con uh, convex. And so this time we're going to finally get the overestimate. And um, of course, you can move the graph up and you can see clearly convex. Um, but but that's that's the common theme here is when you reflect in a horizontal line that's when it's going to change from one to the other and so the answer here is e um, okay so uh, and you could also think about that um, in terms of the, if you didn't it wouldn't matter the, the fact that the graph moved up doesn't matter because even if you left the graph here the trapeziums would the, the straight lines would be under this graph um, so at first you think oh that's still an underestimate except remember these are negative areas. So if the trapeziums gave you an answer of like 0.5 and the actual answer was negative, negative 0.8, negative 0.5 is greater than negative 0.8, so you end up with an overestimate anyway. So, so that's also fine. You can think about it that way. You didn't need to move the graph up. It's just the concavity and the convexity that matter here. Um, okay, so uh, another one, uh, it's the same theme again, I think we're going to see. So the first thing we think about is drawing the sine squared graph, which is a, a, a useful thing to know how to do. Um, this is the sine graph. What does sine squared look like? You could do this via double angle formulas, by the way, but I'm not going to because they're not part of the spec officially. Um, now, so you, essentially the sine squared graph, you take all the outputs. So so this is the outputs are sine of x. So x is 0 0.5, sine of x is, um, uh, sorry, um, x is like 30, sine of x is 0 0.5. You square those outputs, right? Um, so for example, 0 0.5 squares to 0 0.25. 0 0.6 squares to 0. Point something smaller than 0. 0.6. The graph flattens down. 1 just squares to 1, so it stays where it is up here. So it sort of flattens, but still somehow reaches the same point, and then flattens back down here again, reaching 0, because 0 squared is 0. But when you get to the negatives, like negative 1 squared is 1, and negative 1 half squared is 0. 0.25. So the graph just repeats exactly the same thing going up again, down, up again, and down, and likewise over here. And so you actually end up with a symmetrical graph that's positive all the time. 
Um, you also, if you know some things about odd and even functions, you can say the sine function is odd because f of x equals negative f of negative x. But if you square both of these, um, you get this because the negatives square out to make a positive, and you suddenly end up with a nice even function, f of x equals to f of negative x. And so that's just saying the graph is uh, symmetrical in the y-axis. Now this is making an underestimate, so sorry, an overestimate. So we're looking for the graph somewhere to be convex in some um, lit in some strip. So if we just say the strip is looks a bit like this, we've got a convex graph now, it's moving up like this. Um, technically I think I should have been very careful to move this earlier than the inflection point, which is probably halfway. So I think I should have been careful to move this a little bit closer um, to the starting point. It's convex up to sort of the halfway point and then becomes um, concave. So I, I think I should have been a bit more careful to move these a little bit further to the left, but I hope you can see what I'm doing. It still looks roughly convex here, just about. Um, so it's still going to be an overestimate. Now, if we um, just do that between the negative a and b instead, but because of what I've already said, the graph is symmetrical, right? So we may as well just be integrating the same place. And so if it was an overestimate before, this is still an overestimate. Um, so that's, um, that's definitely still true. Um, and now here, this one here, well, you could think about plotting cos of x, squared of x, but instead, just write cos squared as 1 minus sine squared, and then do you see the trick I'm about to pull? It's the same as what we did before, right? In that what we're going to do is we're going to take this graph, and we're going to flip it. All right, we're going to flip it in the um, x-axis. And so it's anything that was convex, which I'm hoping this bit is just about, is going to become concave. And so the overestimate would swap to an underestimate. Um, and so one and two are both necessarily true because we're flipping um, in the x-axis. This should definitely say x-axis. Um, and maybe while I'm here doing a bit of editing, um, this should maybe move closer so we definitely end up with a, a concave bit. But anyway, both of them are true, again, for that same reason we've seen a couple of times now where we're reflecting. Um, so convexity becomes concavity and, and we swap the estimate over. So that same rule applied there as well. Now here is, is, a, is a very paper two classic question. Um, again, we've, we've got some graph here uh, where trapezium wall is producing an overestimate. So we could sketch something that looks a bit like this, convex. So an overestimate gives us something that's just a little bit over where the curve goes between A and B. And we're asking um, which of these things is true here. I just made a video on if and only if, and I actually did this question here as well. But I'll just do it again. Um, so what are our conditions then for... for um, overestimates. Well, like I said, the graph is convex, but also f double dashed um, is greater than zero. That's the key thing. Um, and so, okay, well here I've got, uh, it's talking about the gradient and the second derivative. I've already discussed at the start though that gradient actually doesn't matter. Only second derivative matters. Um, now clearly all of these are wrong, right? Because this is saying double dash is, is less than zero, which uh, it's definitely not the case. So all of this is wrong. This is correct, though, with f double dash being greater than zero. So which of these things is it? Well, it can't be the only if case, because the, this here says only if f dashed is less than zero. Here, I've got a positive gradient, and we already know that the gradient itself doesn't matter. So it can't, we can't have a condition that says only if the gradient is less than zero, right? Because the, the actual gradient doesn't matter, only the second derivative, the gradient of the gradient. And what this is actually saying here is that though you can draw another graph, like I said at the very start, with a negative gradient that's still overestimated, right? So here, this would still be overestimated between A and B, clearly. The lines would go above that curve there. Um, and this one is, it, it does meet these conditions here, right? Where F dashed is less than zero, F double dashed is greater because that's the, the actual condition we need to meet. But, it, but the answer can't be the only if cases because, I mean, firstly, all of these are just wrong. But it can't be the only if cases because there are two cases that work. So it can't only be this one. Like, there are two that work here. So it can't be this one. can't be any of the top ones. But it also can't be the if and only if because if and only if, as I explained in the other video, is, like, part of it is only if. So if the only if isn't true, the if and only if definitely isn't true either. Um, and we're just left with these two cases. We already discussed that this one is wrong because it means it, it wants the deg second derivative to be less than zero, which is incorrect for overestimates. So the answer will be D. Um, and yeah, that's the trapezium rule. Um, thank you for watching.